Hello everyone and welcome to, I've literally lost count of what day it is, but it's the second last day of the AFL trophy. It ends tomorrow night at 7.30pm. I will have a lot of posts tomorrow being on the last day on Facebook and Instagram. Um, and I will do a, day, a, a full recap of the trade period on Thursday night, for Thursday night. Um, but the trade's done today. Jack Bowes to Geelong with pick seven. Unbelievable. And God was going to feature through help their academy kids' points for next year. Billy Frampton's joined the Pies for a future third. Um, and Brody Grundy has joined the Pies. Oh, sorry, joined. Oh, they wish they stayed. He stayed. He's joined the Demons for pick 27. We'll get through those trades and more right now. The Jack Bowes thing, look, it doesn't sit well with me at all. does not sit well with me at all. The AFL originally said, no, you have to trade a future second to him. And then that seemed to go out the window pretty quickly. The Steve Hawking's previous experience and affiliation with the AFL seems to have played some manoeuvres here. Now being at Geelong again. They're yeah, very funny, eh? You can hear that in the background, can't you? See if you've noticed it so far. But anyways, it is it's not wrong. Then It's not right. Then future third, they end up getting the Suns. I don't like it. The salary cap dumb. Yes, I know. I understand that. But how can the AFL change the rules for some and not for others? They blocked the trade mega, mega trade originally with a minor tweak. Um, but they this massive problem, they couldn't stop and stick to their gun. At least make Geelong give a future second, which is a little bit more reasonable, but no. Future third, which could be a pick in the 50s. That, and then they got pick seven with the player. Player's probably worth a pick in the 30s. And then you get the player and pick seven. You've known my thoughts about this for a long time. It's absolutely ridiculous. And a team that just won the premiership has gained a solid player and pick seven for nothing, basically. Absolutely bullshit. Also... Ollie Henry is no guarantee. We'll get to that in a second. So I jumped the gun there. Billy Frampton's joined the Pies on it for a future third. About yeah, right, I would have gone probably a future fourth. But Collingwood says he's going to play as a key defender. He can play Ruck and play up forward. It's a bit of versatility there, but they were at him and he's going to play as a key defender because they missed Jordan Rufford this year, who retired earlier on. So, yeah, they're going to use him there. Then we're going to look at the Brody Grunny one. Pies fans are up and about. For the wrong reason, saying this is disgraceful, they caved in, pick 27. Look, it was worth more than that, but you needed the money. Yeah, that was the main thing. So, I mean, didn't really have the best bargaining power when you, when you forced him out in a way. So, unfortunately, that's what... That's what's happened. So, unfortunately for the Pies, uh, they lose their star, Ruckman and Brody Grunny. They go to... Heavy reliance on Darcy Cameron in particular with Mason Cox. So, look. It's not ideal for them pies. I don't think it was the ideal move. They could have kept him and shipped someone else out. Not to go but they could have shipped someone else out. But it's not the right move to do. But they've done it now, and the pies didn't have to live with that for a long time. Five years he would take at Melbourne, and Collingwood is still paying part of that. Right, so they're the deals that have happened so far. Now, while I'm recording this just after 4 p.m. on the second last day, the final day, trades cannot officially go through until three from 3 p.m. tomorrow till 7.30. Victorian times so a four-and-a-half-hour windows. They can obviously talk in between all that. Uh, but officially go through between 3 p.m. and 7.30 p.m. Victorian time tomorrow night. So we've got four-and-a-half hours to do the nitty-gritty dealing. And these are the following names that are still, as of this recording, yet to be done. Jacob Hopper, Rory Lobb, Josh Dunkley, Brad Hill, Hunter Clark, Tom Mitchell, Asava Radigalia, Lloyd Meek, Ollie Henry, Paddy Dow, Braden Fiorini, Sam Wiedemann, Reese Matheson, Lockie Whitfield, Nick Haynes, and Ivan Soldo. We'll start off with Ivan Soldo and Hopper. It's so exclusively revealed last night on my page. I expect that to get done. Richmond would get pick th or give pick 31 a future first and Ivan Soldo. Um, that's been already in. Then Brisbane, uh, Richmond get a late pick with. Um, Hopper as well, so that's very likely to be the case right now, so you can swap those two names off the list uh, Brad Hill, I don't see that happening now, unfortunately so we can kind of wipe that off the list as well Rory Lobb I don't think this gets done, but apparently there's been talks, the best it's been for months, the last two days for got Jackson in, they've done what they needed to do, and they've got him in and 
Another name I'm going to add in a second. Uh, Rory Lobb. I don't think it gets done still. I think Fremantle stick to their guns. They've been in the previous years, so they'll stick to their guns. Now, Fremantle have joined the race. We mentioned last night from Mark McGowan of the Herald Sun that GWS are making a late play for Jager O'Meara. He's got a year left to go on his Hawks contract on a heavy back-ended contract, they say. Um, and now the Giants have contenders for Jager O'Meara. And that is now the Dockers. Now, keep in mind, Jager O'Meara is from WA. Fremantle are a top eight side. This could convince him, and this could help unlock Lloyd Meat to the Hawks, where Freya would take part of O'Meara's side. I don't know why they want another miss, especially, I know, an experienced mid. Monday out, I suppose, but you still got Brayshaw and Sarong to play Jordan Clark through there. You can, you got the whole mixture of plays of the Dockers, so, and that five's still there, so, yeah, I don't really understand the play for O'Meara. If he was on the cheap, that's different. From a trade point of view, it might be cheap, but from a money point, it's not. Um, I suppose so, and then they're using the big money on Jackson, so, yeah, I don't quite understand this move, doesn't mean it's going to happen, um, but I think it makes logical sense, goes back home, plays a contender, it'd be great for him, uh, but I don't know if it's a great fit for the dogs, so, and then if that does happen, Lloyd Meek could go to Hawthorne pretty comfortably, even though Freer, again, like Lobb, are reluctant to lose him, but more open to lo- lose Lloyd Meek than Roy Lobb. Um, Hunter Clark, I've had my so- two sources in particular say, this is changing by the day. St Kilda will let him go if the right offer is made. But at the moment, the right offer is not being given from North Melbourne. They said Brady Rawlings yesterday and this morning that they are interested still in Hunter Clark. They think he's a talented player, which he is. Um, but that St Kilda are reluctant to give up at the moment, exactly like I said. So unless North... And they're saying never say never, though. So that old old saying never say never, which leaves it open... And unless St Kilda can get a late first rounder, they may do the deal, which will be very, very interesting. Tom Mitchell, Graham Wright was just on Trade Radio. He said that that won't be a big chance of happening. It's unlikely. Um, but they they can also that to try to drive the power down, the bargaining power for Hawthorne. Um, I still think this one is a chance. Um, Braden for already will not happen, according to Graham Wright. I've got a feeling they've got a tight cap. It rejected Geelong's pick 25 for Ollie Henry, and rightfully so. Geelong tried to get the cheap out of Gold Coast, and they're trying to do it out of Collingwood. So Gold- Collingwood is saying, no, you're not. And I'm glad they're doing that at the moment. They have to get creative Geelong with future picks, which they can't trade out their future first. So they have to get creative Geelong, trade out pick seven, split it. That might be your only way. Otherwise, you'll probably head back to Collingwood, despite him being out of contract. So I doubt he wants to go through the preseason draft and potentially get hit or get picked by the Roos or the Eagles or anyone else in that mix. So, yeah, I don't think he'd want that. So, very likely he could end up staying at the pause another one year. He could still go to the Geelong, but Geelong will have to be creative here, and Collingwood should not cave in. Now, also, um, yes, a pick 25 was rejected for Henry. Fiorini, unlikely to happen. This Graham Wright said the surprise list boss. They're interested in him. Suns are happy to keep him, and it's doubtful he'll go. They're hinting at a tight salary cap, Graham Wright. So if they were to keep Ollie Henry, they probably can't fit either Tom Mitchell or Brayden Fiorini. Fiorini is obviously at the back burner in terms of a preference. They obviously rather Tom Mitchell first. And they may not be able to fit both in unless Hawthorne can come to the party and pay more of Tom Mitchell's wage for that heavily back ended last year in his contract. Or Colin would just smooth it out. So that's why I'm saying this one is still a live possibility. Fiorini and Fiorini seems to be almost ruled out. Now, Geelong, another way they could unlock the Ollie Henry trade is Asava Radigalia. Boy, they'd have offered pick 33, which I don't know why. So Geelong could then offer pick 25, I think it is, and 33 to the Pies for Ollie Henry. Now people say, oh, we're 25, at 25 they rejected. Why would they accept this? It's multiple picks in the area, uh, which is why Collingwood may consider this, but Geelong would have to let go of the contract in Radigalia to Boy, Lades. It's funny, they're playing Harper with Port but they're not happy the other way around. So very hypocritical, if you ask me. Um, now, what else have we got here? Paddy Dow's up, very likely to stay now. The Blues is contracted. They lost Will Set for the rest of them yesterday. So I see him staying. Uh, we mentioned about Lloyd Meek, depending on... I don't think Freya want him... They don't want him to go. But they might let him go, especially if Jago Ramiro was to come in in terms of a um, swap of picks and maybe some players... Or the pl- two players and some pick swaps in their favour... Of Hawthorne, so uh, and maybe salary wise, Hawthorne will take the salary or some of the salary. Sam Wiedemann, um, met with and yesterday, big t- change of events. It's going to be very likely if he was to leave, we go to St Kilda. Freo, uh, Melbourne said no, 
and now he's almost certain to join the Bombers. Uh, Reese Matheson had interest from the Bombers, but now that they picked up Will Setterfield, I don't know if that'll happen. Lockie Whitfield and Nick Haynes are two names to keep an eye on, but I'd, now that talk has started to die down after it was brought up by Damien Barrett, I think it was, about five days ago. I think it was Friday, so that seemed to have died down. Um, what trades do you think your side should do? Send them off in the comment section below. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Trying to hit 2,000 subscribers by the end of the year would greatly appreciate We're up to, I think it's 1,646, I think. So I want to keep that number up. So please help subscribe to the channel and do all that shebang. And um, yeah, see if your club can do something. Because I wish St Kilda would do something and actually bring somebody in. Be creative, St Kilda. Since to go, you missed out on him. You didn't really attempt to go for Jack Rose at all, which was pathetic. You didn't go for Griffin Logue. You didn't attempt for Lloyd Meek. So do something. You apparently had interest in Lewis Malikin. Then you went for St. Cordy and said, doesn't hurt to go for another defender. Sounded like Sydney's list boss, Kenny Beats, and said today on Trade Radio that St. Kilda were interested. It sounded like they were happy to facilitate, facilitate that trade, but he said, with Cordy coming in, doesn't look like that's now happening for St. Kilda. So you heard of depth, gags, and Saints, rats, lethers. Do something. If you can't do anything major, be creative. I'd rather be on the list management, and then we would have done wheeling and dealing, and we would have done some trades already. Brett Hill would have been gone. We would have had another Ruckman in. Who knows Brody Grundy, or definitely Lloyd Meek. Um, we could have had Griffin Logan. could offer the same money as North did. Fix the defense, fix the Ruck. Right there with Meek, give another play in tandem with Murrow Marshall up forward. Meek plays Ruck. Simple as that. Then you fix your four-line problems with depth options. You play Marshall more permanent as a forward. Problem solved. You could have got some more depth plays. Wiedemann out. It all could have been great. But you're sitting on your asses doing jack shit. And, oh, by the way, if you got both, you could have got pick seven. Which, you want to attack the draft, and I get that. But you could have got the plays in as well. You could have got the picks and the plays in at the same time. But you didn't. Unbelievable. Do something and stop disappointing us because... Well, uh, well here is some breaking news now. I didn't plan to record here at Cricket again. Because, you're truly, if the weather is permitting, we start this week. So what I basically want to sum up is there's another breaking news story. Of course, again, yours truly records, and the recording. There's more recordings, uh, more news coming out, and that's Jacob Hopper has officially joined the Richmond Football Club on a seven-year deal, along with pick 53 and 63. No Ivan Solo in this trade. GWS receive pick 31 and a future first. That doesn't rule out Ivan Solo not going to the Giants in a separate deal, but it now at least puts it in question. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Again, as I said earlier, make sure to subscribe to the channel. And, of course, make sure you tune in tomorrow. And Thursday at 9, I'm going to have a full recap of every club's trade period. And, oh, trust me, a lot of them are going to be explosive. And especially, especially the St Kilda one. Especially, I'm saying especially again because I can. And especially if St Kilda do nothing else from here on out. Just bookmark that because it will be explosive and I will go indeed. Scoops goes bang!